Hello everyone, my name is Pallavi and I am going to teach you physics. First of all, welcome to class 7th. We will start with the first chapter of physics that is physical quantities and measurement. Something which can be measured is known as physical quantity. For example, you can measure the length of your pen. Let's say it is 10 cm. So this length is what? It is a physical quantity. In this chapter, we will discuss about four physical quantities and they are area, volume, density and speed. So let us start one by one. We'll begin with area. The amount of surface covered by a closed object is known as its area. Area can be measured in different units. You may have heard about people saying that I have a plot of 1000 square feet or I have a field of 100 hectares or 100 acres. So square feet, acres, hectare, all these are units for area. However, in science, we go by SI units and SI unit for area is meter square. One hectare is 10,000 meter square. Area of regular shapes, regular shapes like square, rectangle, triangle, circle, they can be calculated by using their specific formula. However, there is no such specific formula for irregular objects. Irregular objects means like your palm or a leaf, something like this. To calculate area of an irregular object, we use a graph paper. Area of a square can be calculated by formula side into side. Area of rectangle is length into breadth. Area of triangle is half into base into height. And area of circle is pi into radius square. Areas of regular objects can be calculated by using their formula. We simply put the values in formula and multiply it and then we get the area. For irregular objects, we use graph paper. In graph paper, all the boxes are of dimension 1 cm by 1 cm. It means every box has area of 1 cm square. For example, to calculate the area of your palm, first you will trace the boundary of your palm on the graph paper. First step is to count the full boxes. There may be some boxes which are half covered or less than half covered. First we will count the number of full boxes. Now we will count boxes which are more than half or half and don't forget to multiply the number by 1 by 2. For example, if you get 16 half boxes, so you half the number that is 8 and add this number to the number of full boxes. We don't count the boxes which are less than half covered. We simply leave them. Now add the number of full boxes and number of half boxes after dividing it by 2. So you get the approximate area of your palm. Now the next quantity is volume. The amount of space occupied by any object is known as its volume. SI unit of volume is cubic meters or you may call it meter cube. However, for liquids, we usually measure volume in liters or in milliliters. One meter cube is equal to thousand liter. Liquids are stored in a container. The volume of a liquid which can be stored in a container is known as the capacity of that container. After the liquid is poured in a container, a curve can be seen on the surface of that liquid. This curve may be convex or may be concave. This curve is known as meniscus. To measure the accurate reading, we should always note down bottom reading in case of concave meniscus and top reading in case of convex meniscus. And if you don't do this, this type of error which will be there in your reading is known as parallax error. To calculate volume of regular objects like cube, cuboid, sphere, cylinder and cone, they have their fixed specified formula. So by using those formula, we can calculate volume of these regular objects. For example, to calculate volume of a cube, the formula is side into side into side or side cube. Formula for cuboid is length into breadth into height. 
there is no fixed formula for calculating volume of irregular objects like to calculate area of irregular object we use graph paper similarly to calculate volume of an irregular object we use displacement method for example you have a stone and you wish to calculate volume of the stone for that you will need a measuring cylinder a thread and that stone you tie a thread around the stone and fill some water in the beaker let's say you filled 500 ml of water in the beaker now put that stone in the beaker you will see there is some rise in the level of water let's say it is 550 ml now so what is the rise in the water level earlier it was 500 ml now it is 550 ml it means this 50 ml rise in the water level is because of the volume of the stone because 50 ml of space is occupied by the stone so you can say that volume of stone is 50 ml however stone is a solid this volume which we calculated by displacement method is in milliliter and by conversion method we can convert this milliliter into meter cube we discussed area and volume now let us move on to the next physical quantity that is density to understand density let us take two balls one of them is iron ball and another is cotton ball of same volume you will find that iron ball is heavier as compared to cotton ball this is because in iron particles are closely packed so for the given volume iron ball has more weight this is known as density you can say that density of iron is more than cotton so density can be defined as mass per unit volume if you wish to calculate density of any substance you divide its mass by its volume the si unit of density is kilogram per meter cube and in cgs system we measure it in terms of gram per centimeter cube the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube if there is a substance whose density is less than 1 gram per centimeter cube it is going to float on water if the density of the substance is more than 1 gram per centimeter cube this substance will sink in the water for example density of iron is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube obviously it is more than 1 gram per centimeter cube it means iron objects are going to sink in the water and density of wood is 0.6 gram per centimeter cube that's the reason wood floats on the water and if the density of the substance is equal to the density of water so it will partially float and partially sink in the water the last physical quantity for the chapter is speed speed tells us how fast or how slow the object is moving regardless of its direction speed of an object can be defined as distance traveled by the object per unit time the si unit of speed is meter per second though in day to day life we measure it in terms of kilometer per hour however the si unit for speed is meter per second for example when you say speed of my car is 60 km per hour it means your car is going to cover 60 km in 1 hour 120 km in 2 hours and so on thus we come to the end of the chapter i hope you understood everything bye bye